right, welcome into the Courtside Podcast. You are sitting courtside, and we're going to talk rebounding today. So a lot of coaches have reached out, whether they're in courtside, and I'm doing one-on-one consulting for them, or just coaches that will um, you know, hit me up occasionally and ask for some advice. And common theme in the last couple of weeks has been, Coach, can you share some rebounding drills with me? My team doesn't rebound well enough. Uh, rebounding is one of those things where your team will never do well enough uh, as a coach, right? Because you give up like one offensive rebound and, and uh, you piss you off. So uh, we're always looking for ways to be a better rebounder. And what I would argue is that drills aren't going to get you there. So there's a difference between drills in games uh, and there's a difference between teaching technique of rebounding and getting your teams to rebound better or, or more effectively. So I will share uh, my thoughts on drills and games and then technique versus uh, just rebounding in general. So goal is to give you some practical ideas that you can take to your program today. So we're going to jump right in. So I would use rebounding drills to teach technique. Uh, you may want to do this first. I think that's our, uh, as a coach, that's our first inclination is to teach the technique. But you could also just build the mentality. Like I want to build relentless rebounders that pursue the ball, that were physical, uh, and that you know rebounding is just important. I don't think you need drills to do that. Uh, but we'll start with technique um, just for the sake of sharing some drills. So uh, basically, what we want to do is is teach how to rebound. Um, through our technique, through our drills, that'll teach the technique and some teaching points, some sticky language. So the first thing I would say is um, blocking out could be overrated. It's probably an unpopular opinion, but I don't think you need to block out every single time the opponent shoots, depending on what the offensive player does. But what we want to do on every single time is we always want to check. So imagine I'm in the paint, I'm a help defender, shot goes up, I'm going to check. And what I mean by checking is I'm going to make eye contact with the person that I'm guarding. Uh, And by doing that, I'm checking to see if they're coming for an offensive rebound. If they come for an offensive rebound, I've got to go hit them. If they don't, I don't need to block out. So let's go through first uh, scenario. We'll say they don't go for a rebound. So rise of the shot. I check. I make eye contact with the player that I'm guarding. And if they don't pursue the rebound, they're standing or they're getting back in transition defense, then I'm going to do what we call check and chase. That would be our sticky language. We like alliteration. We like rhyming. So check and chase is what we would do if our player does not go for an offensive rebound. If they do go for an offensive rebound, we would have to hit and get, meaning uh, shot goes up, I check, they take a step towards the rim, so I'm going to go get them. I want to be the aggressor. Uh, I don't want to let the offensive player come to me because now they're winning the space game. So if I'm around the rim, The only shot I'm really going to get is a make or a very short rebound. I want to give myself as big of a slice of the pie as I possibly can. So the earlier I go hit the offensive player, the more room I'm clearing in front of me for a rebound. So when I go hit, I want to escape the paint. Okay, So we want to make this stuff measurable. Uh, If we are a help defender, we go escape the paint. So we get outside of the paint. We get everything in front of us. And then I want to hit first. I've heard, I think Bob Huggins used to call this drawing first blood. So you're going to hit them. They draw blood first. Um, You want to be, basically, you want to be the windshield, not the bug. It is a hit or get hit scenario that we're in there. So we want to hit and get by escaping the paint. We put a forearm in their chest. Uh, and then we want to cut the floor. Okay, so if you me- if you imagine a receiver versus cornerback relationship, a lot of times a cornerback will um, send the receiver to the boundary, to the sideline, and that's cutting the field into like a tenth. Or we're going to force everything in the inside because that's where my help is. Maybe we're playing zone. I don't know. I don't know. Really, no crap about football, to be honest with you. But I know enough to where you know if we play straight up every time, we better be really physical on the snap, or uh, we better um, you know cut the field in some way. We don't want to allow the offensive player to have an actor reactor. You know that that offensive player is always going to have a slight advantage. 
uh, to, to juke you. So our physicality can take away offensive advantage, but also our angle of the closeout. So what I'm getting to is we want to cut the floor in our closeout. We would attack the inside hip and force all offensive players down to the baseline. Uh, and by doing that, again, we give ourselves a bigger slice of the pie and we neutralize the advantage that offense has. That would be what we would teach technique-wise when perimeter rebounding, and we could use some drills to do that. Interior rebounding, meaning the closer you are to the basket, if I'm a, you know, a help player, if I'm guarding the post and I'm, I'm guarding someone in the dunker spot or my, my player that I'm guarding is already inside the three, then I've got to be more physical. Okay, And now instead of a check and chase or a hit and hold, this is going to be a hit. I'm sorry, instead of a check and chase or a uh, hit and get, this is going to be a hit and hold. So I'm going to have to make contact, and it's going to be a physical uh, battle here where we're just leaning on each other. Uh, we're trying to wedge them maybe underneath the basket. They might be trying to push us up to fight for space, but that's going to be a more physical and, and more physical for longer. So that's a hit and hold, and then we can release and go get the rebound. Okay, so that's basically what defensive rebound comes down to me. We've always said it, you know, it's more heart and hustle or more want to. It's effort driven. Uh, and I don't think drills teach you effort. I think it, drills are designed to teach technique. So I might even, like I said earlier, is suggest starting with the heart and hustle and effort part of the rebounding. And then you can always clean up your technique later. Whatever order that you pick this, it, it, completely up to you. Um, but I would use games to build your defensive effort. Um, players remember what they think about, so we want to put uh, rebounding at the forefront of their minds. We want to use these primer, like so. We might use like a primer game or a training game. Um, couple that we use would be a one-on-one -on -one rip it where. Groups of three, coach throws the ball up, and we're just trying to go rip the rebound. And what we're teaching them is go get it with two hands, and then we rip it and we secure it underneath our chin. Um, and then you know you could even add something like a pivot and an outlet pass outside of that. Or we might start um, a game like a one-on-one -on -one game with uh, just a rebound in general. Of you could have two players in the paint, coach shoots, whoever gets the rebound plays offense. They kick out to coach, reshape the floor, and play. You could also do that from a from a check scenario where we're perimeter rebounding. Player, uh, you know, X one is in help. Player one is on the perimeter. Coach shoots. I've got a check and chase or hit and get. Uh, whoever gets the rebound gets to play offense. Um, another one would be tug of war, where you could start any kind of small sided game. But we did a lot of one on one with this, where you have two players that are going to eventually play one on one. Four hands are on the ball. Coach sells, yells go. They try to rip it away from each other. Uh, whoever gets it gets to play offense. So uh, those are just kind of some toughness games, some primer games. That's just uh, preparing them, putting it in their head for the rebounding. So we might progress through maybe a, a drill to a primer to an actual game. Uh, some of our just rebounding games, war rebounding, one that you've probably seen, you got three players in the paint, and it is just an all-out war. There's not a lot of foul calls. Um, if you score, you get off, and a new teammate comes in, or you could just say first one to X amount of baskets if you're just working in a group of three. We would start some five-on-five -five games with a rebound. Uh, so just uh, instead of starting with checking it up top, we're just going to start from the point that we want them to think about and that's the rebound so if we're going to play five on five instead of checking it up top we just start with a shot five on five live rebounding our shooter got back so shooter to get back so it'd really be five on four rebounding uh, and you could adjust that to fit your system and then um, you know suggestion and suggestion for practice is any small sided game any any competition segment of practice i would have a coach just watching rebounding and they could watch offensive rebounding defensive rebounding however you wanted to break that up but if you don't have somebody watching rebounds it's one of those things that's easily kind of slipped through the cracks especially at this point of the season you go play your first scrimmage your first game and you're like holy crap we got to be much better rebounders so uh remember be good at what happens a lot your opponents are going to get you know what 40 to 60 shots a game so let's make sure that we're prepared to rebound um, from day one, 
right? Uh, okay, so I want to cover what you know some modified games or rebounding constraints here because when coaches reach out and say, "Hey, give me a drill to help my team rebound," I usually ask, "Well, do, you know, do you need better technique for rebounding, or do you just need your your team to rebound better?" As far as we do it more, we block out more, we block out more physical, we. Uh, you know, we don't just stand and watch the ball go over our head. And this is where the games would come into place. So a uh, couple ideas here. One, just recreate on every shot. So again, you have your coach uh, that's locked in the rebounding. If we don't go maybe five for five in checking, right? Because not all of them have to block out, uh, but we're all going to check. Or you could make your standard four out of five or three out of five, however you wanted to do this. But if we fall short, or if anybody misses, we just we recreate. Uh, if you know Johnny in the corner shot the shot and we missed a block out, we're gonna give that ball back to Johnny. Say shoot it again. All right, go block out. Okay. And the message that we're sending is if you don't do it the first time, we're just gonna stop and make you do it again. So you might as well do it the first time. Uh, the old adage of you get what you tolerate. So if you tolerate your players not rebounding, then they're not going to rebound. That's just the reality. Uh, that's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. Uh, so uh, some other ideas would be, um, let's let's take same shot. So Johnny in the corner shoots a shot, and I don't block out. Uh, what we could do, I, I like two things here, is just, hey, somebody give me a sub for coach. So somebody comes in, I go to a side basket with an assistant coach, and I've got to go block out three, four, five times now. Uh, so the pain... Of, of not changing has to be greater than the pain of changing. So if I don't rebound, now I have to go rebound five times where I could have just rebound once and got it out of the way. Uh, and you know it's not so much of a punishment as much as it is a, you obviously need a reminder here. And if I make you go rebound five times on the side, the next time you're in, I know you're gonna be thinking about rebounding and that's what I want us thinking about. So mission accomplished. Um, some other ways, uh, well, let me share one more way you could do that. So um, I miss a block out. Um, the coach says, Mark, you're off. I get a down and back, but play resumes. So now my team is playing five on four because I didn't block out. And now I got to go to down and back. Let's say it takes me you know, 12, 13 seconds. I'm putting my team at that uh, disadvantage for that length of time. Um, so I like that because there's a, then there's a team, uh, kind of a natural consequence there to your team. If you don't block out, um, other ideas, some constraints or way to modify games would be to only score rebounds. And that could be just defensive rebounds, or it could be, you know, you score all rebounds, offensive rebounds are worth two defensive rebounds are worth one. We're going to play five on five first team to five wins. Okay. Um, you could also play in the half court, three teams of four, kind of like a cutthroat rotation here, only score defensive rebounds if you score on offense. So if you get a basket, you go to defense, which means you have an opportunity to get rebounds and ultimately win the game. Works well with the competitive cauldron. Um, another game that we play, uh, and I love this one is KO game. So you pick one thing and that is the knockout punch that automatically wins. We did this one a lot this past off season at App State because it was one thing that we were really uh, focused on is being a better rebounding team. So uh, we were playing some three on three or some four on four in the off season. And um, we would play by twos and threes to eight. So games would be relatively short. You had to play really hard for you know a short amount of time, very game-like. And if you took a possession off, you're probably going to lose. But what we did with KO game was any offensive rebound putback won the game. So the score could be zero to zero. I get an offensive rebound putback, I win. And by incentivizing offensive rebounding, you're bringing attention to defensive rebounding as well. Rising tide uh, raises all boats. So uh, I love that one. And that was one that we leaned on a lot. Another game, uh, and I think this game is is awesome for transfer. It's one of the best. Is cutthroat. So we're gonna have three teams of four, very similar to only scoring rebounds. But if we don't get a block out, so if we don't check, or if we do check, and our man or player that we're guarding makes an attempt to get a rebound, and we don't go hit them off. So you can only score 
uh, through defensive rebounds or you can only score through getting a stop. But if you don't check or if you don't hit and get or hit and hold, your whole team gets off. New team comes to defense, so you don't earn the right to score points. Very similar to a turnover on offense. We don't even get the opportunity to score. So I love cutthroat, highly recommended. Uh, and cutthroat, uh, just have one success criteria. So I wouldn't have uh, you know, rebounding and uh, ball pressure in that drill. I would just pick one. Players are going to remember what they think about. If we're focused on rebounding, let's make the main thing the main thing. Um, also like this one. So leaving our warm-up, I always wanted to be ready to compete right away. So something you could do every day if you wanted to. And you could modify this from rebounding. Um, if, if you wanted to emphasize something else, this is pretty versatile. But uh, for the sake of rebounding here, let's say you get warmed up and right after the warm up every single day at practice, I think we all need to play more five on five. This is a way to sneak it in is every day you break the warm up and practice, you go straight to five on five and you say, we're going to play five on five until we miss X amount of blockouts. That could be one blockout. That could be until we go three for five and blocking out. So you got to be, uh, you know, 60% or, um, you know, four out of five for 80%, however you wanted to do this. It could be um, until the, you know, either team misses three blockouts total. But the idea is that we're going to either chart possessions or time on the clock. Uh, so um, we could have the clock count up or we could just put like 10 minutes on the clock and count it down. Uh, but we're going to play five on five uh, to start practice and Coaches aren't going to coach anything. If you want to give some reminders to block out, that's fine. Throw some sticky language in there, some buzzwords in there. But we're not going to coach anything else. We're not going to be yelling about offense or on ball defense or positioning. Uh, we're just going to, this is their time to play and think about rebounding only. And we're going to see how long we can go. So let's say we're charting time and day one, we go 37 seconds. Like we have maybe two possessions and then somebody forgets to block out. That's okay. That's giving us a barometer for where we're at. It's giving us a benchmark. Tomorrow, we remind our team that we only got 37 seconds. Can we be better? Maybe the next day you go 52 seconds, and then the next day you go a minute and 10, and you're going to see how long you can go, and that's measurable progress there. Uh, so we would just call that like until we. So five on five until we blank, until we miss whatever rebounds, however you want to design that. Um Another game that's kind of offensive rebound driven that, again, is going to make your defensive rebound better is called Animal Ball. And it is make it, take it with no take back. So team one has the ball. Team two's on defense. Team one hits a three. So they got three points. And an offensive player grabs the ball out of the net, puts it back without taking it back. So it is just grab it out of the net, score. They get two more points. The so score's five nothing. They grab it again. They score it again. Now it's seven nothing. Now defense grabs it out the net. We transition and go the other way with the score being seven nothing. So I love animal ball. There's no um, you know, make miss doesn't matter. Uh, we are playing make it take it, no take backs there. That's a favorite. And you can add that into any small sided game, any one on one game or any five on five game that you play. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is, I was talking with a coach uh, the other day on the phone that reached out about rebounding. And one of his issues was, he just has two or three players that get all the rebounds. But when the one or two of those guys are out, they really struggle. Uh, and this is where constraints can come into play. And this is fun. Um, I think this is uh, this is where coaching, the art of coaching and the nuance there becomes, uh, kind of gives me some juice, gets me excited, makes me miss coaching actually. But um, in this case, my suggestion to him was, okay, well, they can only hit and hold those two or three players and make the other guys get the rebound. Uh, so we're all going to help rebound, but the only ones that can actually get the rebound are the ones that you need to go get more rebound. So instead of wishing it happens or hoping it happens, let's just give a constraint, design the game to where they have to get the rebound. Um, I've also heard of Brad Stevens, I believe way back, maybe when he was um, at Butler, he would, um, to work on hitting and holding, he would make the ball hit the ground first before they went and rebounded. 
Uh, and what that did is that just made them be a little bit more physical and for longer in their blockouts. Uh, along those same lines, game plan wise, if we, and you could do this in practice as a constraint as well, but game plan wise, if the other team just has an elite offensive rebounder or they have a 6'8 and you, your biggest guy is 6'4 and you're really worried about him, is I would have my 6'4 just erase that player and we're going to hit and hold regardless and we're not going to go pursue the rebound because. Uh, with those bigger players, you're just going to have to hold them off for longer, and we're going to let the other four players go get the rebounds. Kind of like, uh, you know, we're not going to let this one guy beat us scoring wise, so we're going to face guard them or box and one or, or uh, you know, trap every time they have the ball. Uh, so, same ideas. We're just not going to let this guy or girl beat us on the board, so we're going to just go hit and hold other four, get a rebound. Um, Tons of other things you can do with rebounding. The, the thing that I would stress to you is there is no magical rebounding drill that's going to get your team to rebound more. It might help you uh, with technique, uh, but again, you could start with the effort part and add the technique later as you go, or you could start with technique, but I would get to the heart, hustle, effort, uh, modifying your game stuff as fast as possible. So I hope this helps. Um, and I hope it gave you some, some practical ideas and stimulate your thinking. Uh, and feel free to use these. If you come up with some constraints or good games, uh, please reach out. I'm always looking to learn uh, new ways to do this. So hope it helps. Have a great season, and uh, we'll see you next time courtside.